Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the NHL slate for this evening. Um, I still am not sure to what extent I'm going to be doing these breakdowns on a regular basis. Um, I think that today is a good day to do it because there's not a lot going on and I have a little time. So once again, I'm going to go through the process kind of beginning to end, sort of presuming that the, um, what was I going to say? that the uh, the slate we're going to start in like an hour. I mean, it won't, but it's a good sense for at least the way I do things. A couple of little tweaks to Saber Sim that I think are going to be fun. Like what we're going to do today, we're going to do two separate builds, one using the new Saber Sim and one using the old Saber Sim. And just for the reason that I'm curious to see what the differences are going to be. Uh, before it completely transitions over to the new Saber Sim. And if this is kind of a little project that I really don't have time to usually during the day. Um, but because I have a little time, I'm going to do that. So again, first things first. First thing I like to do is get a sense for what I think should happen. In other words, with the projections. Then we're going to look at the projections, then try to build at least either theoretically or actually by hand and then we're going to go through two Saber Sim builds, one using the new Saber Sim and one using the old uh, and utilizing contest Sims in all of them. I think this is going to be a pretty in-depth video and we shall see where this takes us. So it is a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, what is it? Nine game slate, which is very healthy. Um, first thing we'll look at is just basically the Saber Sim implied team totals. That'll at least give you an idea of what team should, you would think, project pretty well. Um, Vancouver, or excuse me, Vegas, 3.2. That's not so big. Tampa, 3.4. Carolina, 3.6 is one of the bigger team totals. Florida, 3.5. Nashville, 3.5. Dallas at 4.0 looks to be the highest. And then there's obviously Edmonton. So it is kind of spread out across the, uh, the slate here. I would say Dallas, Edmonton, Calgary, Nashville. All these teams with 3.5 and above are going to look pretty good. It just from the perspective of how many goals you're going to score. And then with it'll filter down to where the fantasy points come from and then price and things like that. But it gives us an idea of what we think at least should happen. Another thing that I like to do, you don't think this is a big deal, but I, I kind of do is just to look at the way the slate breaks down as far as spacing goes. Um, let me just do this to get this alert out of my way here. Okay. Um, so there's one, two, three, four. Five seven o'clocks is seven thirty, and then two eights, then the nine by itself, and the ten by itself. It, it, I I'd like to do this to get a sense for when there are late swap opportunities. Um, at the very least, yeah, you know, I would give it a run at like seven fifty before this you know last group, and then if you really had time, I'd give it another run, you know, right at about eight fifty. I think that makes a little bit of sense. Um, okay, so let's take a look at my actual sheets, which again, I don't put up, you know, all the time for free, but uh, we'll do it this time. And what we're looking at here is kind of, again, we are sorting them by sheets value score, which is, it doesn't have the formula in here, but it's a, it's a formula which attempts to reduce the points per dollar metric and the just raw fantasy point metric into one number. Um, this is always kind of undergoing, <laughs> going work. I know Goldie's actually trying to, to make improvements upon this as well. But, uh, I found that across most sports, this is the best way to kind of reduce everything to one number. And what we're looking for in hockey is ideally a lot of guys or a handful of guys from the same team, preferably from the same line that project well, you know, cause hockey is all about, well, mostly about correlation. So if you could find guys that project well, they're going to correlate well if they're on the same line. And that's what makes kind of, you know, the good building blocks to like good hockey lineups. All right. So the first thing that I notice when I look at this is the top, you know, overall sheets value score guy on Tampa doesn't really have anybody else that rates, you know, really highly. You do have a headman and Gens and Gensel, but they're, it's not like these guys are that high. 
And by the time you get through putting all three of these dudes in, you're 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 wasting like half your salary. So it doesn't look like, even though you know Tampa's got a big total, that their line is going to be a, a real priority for me. Um, next thing that I'm going to notice here is, boy, Sean Monahan at 3,300, and Zach Wierenski from. So we have one, two. So we have three, maybe even four Columbus guys. Uh, they're not all on the same regular line, but they're all on the same power play line. So this actually looks pretty intriguing to play the four guys in the power play line together, or maybe even find the fifth. What else can I notice here? So, okay, you have uh, Kaji from, from Calgary along with Mackenzie Wegar. They're all kind of in the same neighborhood. Then you, Rasmus Anderson, he's from, the two, he's from the two line. Yeah, so while the plays are okay, you don't see a lot of really great correlation. I see these two cheap Washington guys, or these, I don't say cheap, these mid-range to cheap Washington guys, again, from the same power play line. So with Dylan Strom as well. So this is actually pretty sneaky. So I think that the Washington power play line is also very, very good. What else do I notice here? Uh, here's the Florida. But it doesn't look like anybody else is that great except for Sam Bennett. So I think that if I were going to hand build, what I would probably try to do is play either or both those Columbus lines or the Washington lines. And I would focus on the power play lines. Now, the other thing you'll notice is that they were all pretty cheap. So you could probably get in some kind of decent one-offs also if you wanted to. Um, okay, so what does this mean? Let me let me actually try to build a lineup and see what we could do if we were just literally trying to hand build, which I I do in hockey actually from time to time. So let's clear this and let's remind ourselves of some of these guys. Let, let's just put in guys from both of them. We'll put in Monahan for Columbus. We'll put in Wierenski for Columbus. We'll put in, who else was it? Uh, Kent Johnston. Again, we're looking at that power play line. Um, who else? We'll get back to the rest of it. I guess that was pretty much it. From, from the other team, from that Washington line, let's see this. Washington, we had Philip. No, no, no. Uh, John Carlson. Not Vancouver. John Carlson. And then Tom Wilson. And Dylan Strom, right? Okay. Now, before we even move on, let's try, let's find a goalie here. And I like to find kind of the cheapest goalie that looks decent. Um, adding your 8,500 is probably a little bit too much. Uh, but you know what we can do? It's sorted by goalie. How about that? And. Vasilevsky is not bad. And Hill. Look at this guy. Pete uh Pete Mrazek. Now, what's good about this one, he's against Calgary, who's probably gonna put up a bunch of shots. So this is actually a really good play. So let's 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 put him in. Where is Chicago? Um over here. So we put in some of these cheapos here. And before we even fill this out, I mean, you can see that we can we can do some stuff. You know, at $74.50 a man, we, we could juice this stuff up. So, like, for example, the top guy on the Washington power play, I'm going to – I was about to really date myself here and and just presume that's Alex Oveshkin, but is he not in the league anymore? It's like terrible that I don't know this. Let's see. 
Um, yeah, I don't think he plays anymore. Yeah, maybe he does. No, there it is, Alex Ovechkin. No, there it is. So you could play him really, real, rather easily to fill out that Washington power play. One, two, three, four, five. And Dubois is the rest of it. So if we really wanted to be, be, be whatever, let's put in Ovechkin. So we have Strom, Wilson, Ovechkin, Carlson. We could play Monahan still, but we don't even have to. We already have a good 4-3. And then if we wanted to, and this is something I don't I don't usually play this way, but you could play one of those really good expensive one-offs. Um whether it be Forsberg for San for for, for Nashville or even the Tampa Kucherov at 9400, we can almost play him. What if we just what if we finished off this Washington thing? Let's let's put in the other Washington. So that's Dubois. And now we can play fifth. So we have a five man Washington. We're playing one of the one of the Columbus guys. And we could put a two man together if we wanted to. of maybe even Florida, you know, like Bennett and Rodriguez, maybe something like that. Does that make sense? So if we went just for just the hell of it, say so went Bennett and then Rodriguez, you don't even need. You don't even need to do this. You don't even need to leave fourteen hundred on the table here. Barkov is out, so you could screw around. Okay, but the point is that if you start with this Washington power play line, then you could do a lot of lot of stuff here. Okay, now I wonder if what Sabersome is going to have us do. So let's do it two ways. First, we're going to do actually, let's do the new Sabersome first. Okay. And here's going to be the difference. The difference is, is that for the most part, the new Sabersome is a lot more automated. So I'll show you what you do with the new Sabersome. We're going to upload our projections. We're, we're going to build 5,000 lineups. And you'll see that I already put my uh the things that I was playing in the contest and part of the the benefit of that is that it will automatically populate the contest sims with the information that you need okay I'll show you like it already puts in what I'm playing and what how many entrants what the prize distribution is so it'll be able to run it's run the contest sims a lot faster before we even do that, I want to take a look and see what we get without even running the Sims at all. So before we even do anything, you'll see that I would be getting mostly uh, Columbus, Tampa, Calgary. You know, those are the top three, followed by Washington. Uh, the other thing you'll see is that a lot of five twos and four threes, like the types of hockey stacks that you're kind of used to getting. And let's, so let's remember this. Like, so remember what this is, this is not even running the Sims. This is just using Sabre score. Um, under large slate. And just if, if anybody's interested, what, what this is, is this formula, it uh, 0.2 times on the possession. It is it is taking 0.8 times the 95th percentile outcome, not 99th, which is interesting. Uh, and it is dinging it for ownership by 0.5, which is pretty it's pretty heavy. So it even though it looks like you know you're getting 
teams that make sense. It is dinging it for ownership, but actually, then again, I mean, Columbus, 67% Columbus. I don't think people thought that we'd be getting that. So it's already pretty, you know, pretty high upside build here. But let's um let's run the Sims and see what we'd be getting. Okay. So what we again, this is much more automated than old Saber Sim. We're gonna get there in a second. So what we're doing is just running the Sims with all for all of these contests at the same time. Okay. Um, and I want to see what we get when this happens. Well, looks like it's a little slow. Looks like a little slow going here. No, here we go. Um, one sec. Where's Roberto? Just I forgot that there was one thing I forgot to do. Okay. Um. So now what we'll be getting is more. Look at this: fifty-five percent Minnesota. Okay, that's running the Sims with all the contest uh, information in there which is a lot different right, than getting the 67% uh, uh, Columbus and the Calgary and whatever. So uh, I want you guys to remember this when we do the old Saber Sim. Okay. So now we could just go ahead and save these to contest and fire them off. Well, as a matter of fact, for now, we can do that. You would save it. And then boom, boom. And it saved all the lineups. It tailored them to all of your contests in a very, very automated way. But now let's go to the old Saber Sim and let's just see if there's any difference. I'm just very curious to see what becomes of this. All right. Now, what Jordan tells me, we have to run a completely new build here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's, uh, well, let's just do this. We have the, we have the projections in. Let's just do a new rebuild of lineups. And I want to see the difference between you know, the display in pure Saber score. And then I want to see the difference in display when we run the actual Sims. Let's give a second. All right, so first of all, let's just take a look at the regular look here, look here, and already it's like much different, right? Oh, so it's only showing 20? Well, I want to do 50 lineups, right? 55 lineups, right? So even still, it'd be an 80% Tampa when you just run the normal Saber score, right? So now let's look at the contest sims. Uh Let's run the contest sims. And then all we're doing is doing the same build, but using old Saber Sim versus new. And again, they said that they made a lot of good changes with the new Saber Sim to, you know, account for upside and all that stuff. I just find it amazing to see such a stark difference. Um, all right, so let's take a look and see what the sim lineups would look like. Got to wait couple of seconds before it kicks in here. Where are you? Spinorama? No, here it kicks save. Okay. So now 
when we sort by risk adjusted ROI, we'd be getting 41% San Jose. So, and then 27% Minnesota. So, so what does all this mean to the average man? We used the exact same projections, okay? We went through the same process, except we used new Saber Sim, new Saber Sim instead of old Saber Sim. One way for your brain to process this is to say, you know what? Minnesota showed up in both of them, so why don't I play? Why don't I use Minnesota? Um, another way to process this information is to say, you know what? Let's just put in, if I'm going to play 50 lineups, let's play 25 from the new Sabre Sim, Sims, 25% from the old. Or if you really want to be pure, you should probably just do the new Sabre Sim builds because it's new for a reason and the improvements were made for a reason. Okay. Um, now, I unfortunately did not save the uh, the settings for the old Sabre Sim. Uh, the new Saberson, but one thing you could do again is to just double check your stack exposure and just make sure that you're getting the types of stacks that you want. And this is actually kind of interesting. You're not even getting all four threes and five twos. You'd be getting a lot of three, three twos and four twos, which uh, again, I don't know exactly what that means. Uh, but I just find it interesting that when to, to see what the impact of these Saberson changes were. Um, so that's pretty much all I have. And again, it's, it's, so for those people that think, oh, you know what? I mean, the, the, the game is becoming so easy to beat or much harder to beat because everybody's using these tools. I'm just showing you that even using this exact tool, there's one little tweak and everything is different. So there's still plenty of room to, to get edge. Uh, and it's, it hasn't become this kind of stock one size fits all system. I very well might just go back to the saber so the saber score of builds. I very what well, may well I very might very well might very well may very well may go back to my hand builds. There's a lot of ways to approach this slate, but I do think that that the Columbus side is probably pretty strong. I'm kind of really stubborn. I stubbornly want to play that Washington thing. But I would trust the Sims to some degree and just just get some of that Minnesota. It doesn't seem to make any sense because they didn't really project all that well. Um, but if they're going to show up in both sets of Sims so so vividly, it's probably a reason. Okay, uh, I hope hopefully that wasn't too boring or too too technical. But again, this is what DFS has become. Uh, I could spend. 45 minutes discussing why uh, Roman Josie is a good hockey player, but that's unfortunately not particularly relevant to uh, what's going on here in DFS. Okay. That'll do it. Um, good luck tonight. And I will definitely put an update, uh, updated projection set out a little closer to lock. Thank you very much and have a good day.